When it comes to starting a business, making more money, or simply just enjoying life more, it's important that you have a system in place to help you organize your tasks so you can get things done efficiently and productively. Getting things done is a time management technique created by David Allen. The system is a way of organizing and keeping track of tasks so you know that the things on your to-do list are truly the things you need to do. This method helps you be as efficient and productive as possible. Make sure you stay until the very end of the video because the last two steps are the most important. Also, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe and click the bell because it really does help out the channel and I appreciate it. The system has five steps and is made up of five lists. The lists are the inbox list, the next actions list, the waiting for list, the projects list, and the someday list. These lists make up the foundation of the getting things done system. Step number one, capture. Write it all down. Create an inbox. The inbox list is where every single thing goes. It's where you record your ideas and thoughts. It's an inbox for everything going on in your head. Phone calls, emails, an idea you thought about in the shower this morning, a friend asking you if you can babysit next week. Every single thing. Some people prefer to have a notebook to jot down thoughts. Others like to use an app or recording gadget. It doesn't make a difference what you use or the number of these inboxes you have. You can have multiple inbox lists. The only crucial part is that you have some place to dump thoughts as they enter your head, regardless of where you are. The moment you initially begin making use of the getting things done system, you need to dump out all the stuff that's going on in your head or going on in your daily life. Make a note of everything you want or need to get done absolutely anything that's been in your brain over the past several days or weeks. In the getting things done language, these are referred to as open loops. Open loops are the thoughts that have been nagging at you. The stuff you think about when you can't go to sleep at 3 a.m. in the morning. The stuff that annoys you every time you think about it, such as that squeaky rocking chair in the living room. This is your chance to close up those loops and prevent them from occupying space in your head. Put it all in your inbox. Steps two and three, clarify and organize. Process your inbox. This is the secret to making the entire method work. As soon as you've got everything out of your head and into your inbox, processing is your next step. This is the part where you take every little thing you've recorded, then clarify and organize it. It might take a good amount of time to make it through everything you've put on the list from your very first brain dump, but don't worry, it gets easier. You continue to get thoughts out of your head and into your inbox, and you frequently sort through and organize them. The more frequently you process, the less work it takes. You process each new thing in your inbox simply by asking yourself a set of questions about it. A. Is it actionable? B. Will it take just one step to accomplish? C. Will it require more than two minutes? D. Should I accomplish it or can I give the task to another person? And E. Does it have to be finished on a certain date or time? How you respond to the questions establishes what list the item gets put into. If it's not put into a list, you either accomplish it right away, trash it, or file it away. So let's walk through each of these questions. Is it actionable? This essentially asks you if you have to perform some sort of task to get the item removed from your list. If the item does not require an action, you can transfer it to one of three areas. Trash, references, or a someday list. Things that aren't worth taking care of or that don't need your focus whatsoever get placed in the trash. Items that are helpful or useful but don't need an action, such as a bread recipe you would like to hold on to or an educational blog post you could need in the future someday, should be stored away in the proper spot as a reference. Last but not least, if an item may call for an action one day but not right now, it is put on the someday list. These are items that you would like to remember but that you don't need to be cluttering up your next actions list. Items such as learning French or write a novel go in this list. 
Does the item require more than one action in order to accomplish it? In the Getting Things Done system, a project is anything at all that calls for more than one step to finish. Anytime your inbox list includes several related tasks, make a separate project to take care of those items. Include the title of this project as an item in your projects list, and then select one action item out of that list to include in your next actions list. How much time will it need to be completed? If an item can be completed in two minutes or less, you need to accomplish it immediately. The concept is that if the item is such a simple thing to accomplish, it wouldn't even be worth your time to worry about putting it into a list or delegating it. This might include things like sending a helpful email to a coworker or writing a nice text message to your mom. If the item requires more than just two minutes, you need to determine if it's an item only you can complete or if you can give it to another person. Can another person do it? If you can simply delegate the item to another person, then do so. If you would like a reminder to check in with the person doing the task, you need to include the task to your waiting for list. Items you might include in your waiting for list could be things that are stopped for any reason, such as you needing a response to an email before you can carry on, or you're waiting for a shipment. Always take note of the date you add the item to this list to ensure that you can check in at the correct time. If you can't delegate a task, then you should add it either to a calendar or include it in your next actions list, ideally with a context tag. Does it have to be completed on a certain date or time? If an item has a certain due date or time, then you need to add it to your calendar. This consists of items such as conferences, dentist appointments, and airline flights. Don't include things that you would like to get completed on a specific date, only items that must absolutely be done. By including only musts on the schedule, you're able to keep it free from clutter, and this makes it more helpful by only presenting items that you absolutely have to do on a certain day. If a thing calls for you to take action, but doesn't have a particular due date, you need to include it in your next actions list. The next actions list consists of items that should be completed immediately. Everything in this listing should be a physical, visible action, such as write email to Sally about reserving venue for party, rather than just plan party. This is one of the most essential rules of getting things done. Writing things down as a visible, physical action makes it more likely that you'll start the job. When it comes to mental effort, it's a lot more simple to call Jennifer to see if she can babysit on Thursday evening than it is to get babysitter, despite the fact that they're practically the exact same. Preferably, you need to add a context tag to things on the next actions list. A context tag shows you exactly where you need to be, what resources you need, and or exactly who you need to have with you to accomplish a task. Samples of context tags could be out shopping, at the office, with kids, cell phone, or laptop. Other contexts you might use include how much energy you have, the amount of time you have available, or what priority a task has. If you can see your next actions list arranged by context, then you can quickly look at your list of tasks to do out shopping or at the office while you're in those specific locations. Step number four, reflect, weekly review. It is definitely important that you do a once a week review of every single thing in each one of your lists. In the Getting Things Done book, David Allen states that the once a week review is a crucial factor for success. And why is that? The longer you allow items in your inbox to accumulate, the more difficult it'll be to take care of everything. Processing only 10 tasks is a lot easier than processing 25 or 100. Frequently going over your lists helps the system to succeed. If you don't review, stuff will begin to get out of hand. You'll neglect adding an item to the next actions list, or you won't remember to eliminate the items that don't need to be on the list anymore. Here are a few points you need to look at every time. A. Every project needs to have a next action. B. Everything on your next action list needs to be a task that you would like to do in the upcoming week. If not, transfer it over to your someday list or get rid of it entirely. And C. 
An item on your someday list may need to be moved over to the next actions list. Before I move on to the last step, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe and click the bell because it really does help out the channel and I appreciate it. Also type the word yes down in the comments below if you're going to try the getting things done method. Step number five, engage. Complete all the items. Now that you've got your system all set up, you can start getting things done in a quick and efficient manner. You know exactly what your next steps are and you can start knocking things out one at a time. Once you start becoming more and more efficient and productive, you just might find yourself with more extra time on your hands. You might decide to start blogging and create a side hustle, or maybe you want to focus on quitting your nine to five job and create passive income. Well, I have a video that can show you exactly how to do that. Click the video on the screen to learn how to quit your job and create the business of your dreams.